chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. So who could imagine? So great a mercy What heart could fathom Such boundless grace The God of ages Stepped down from glory To wear my sin And bear my shame The cross has spoken Forgiven, the King of Kings calls me His own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the one who sent me free. It's grip on me You have broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Hallelujah Praise the one who set me free Hallelujah Death has lost its grip on me Broken every chain, there's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your buried body began to breathe. Oh 
God, you've never left my side. Oh God, my beginning and end. You have pursued me every step of the way. And I know that your goodness and unending love will follow me all of my days here in the vast measure of your promise I'm assured by your peace over me That when I walk through veil or shadow Oh, you'll be with me in the dark For there's no other name in heaven No dream and my portion oh god you're the strength of my heart oh god my beginning and end and you have pursued me every step of the way and i know that your goodness and I will follow me all of my days. I've fallen, faltered still, your hand upholds me in my eyes and heartbreak you're there at every stage i've wandered wavered still you're ever faithful lord my breath and being cries out you are with me i've fallen faltered still your hand upholds me in my eyes and heartbreak you're there at every stage i've wandered wavered still you're ever faithful lord my breath and being cries out that you are with me god my beginning and end you have pursued me every step of the way Your goodness and unending love will follow me all of my days. Oh, oh God, my beginning and end, you have pursued me every step of the way. And I know that your goodness and unending will follow me all of my days Good morning, everyone. Good morning, welcome to VCBC. Um, great to gather together um, on a Sunday for, for service as a community of faith. Um, before we start, um, 
like to just uh, remind us to turn off our devices so that we can focus um, on worshiping God. And, and as we start, I invite you to stand and I invite you to um, yeah, read the scriptural call to worship. Um, it's a chance for us to focus our attention on God. So let us stand. We have a responsive reading uh, based on Psalm 138. Um, I'll read the first part and then we will respond um, with the second part in, in bold and italics on the next slide. I give you thanks, O Lord, with my whole heart. I sing your praise and give thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. You have exalted your name and your word above everything. On the day I called, you answered me. You increased my strength of soul. Though the Lord is high, he regards the lowly, but the haughty he perceives from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve me against the wrath of my enemies. You stretch out your hand, and your right hand delivers me. The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Your steadfast love, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we're thankful um, for this opportunity to gather. We're thankful for your steadfast love, um, for your goodness, uh, for your presence in our lives. And Lord, um, as we gather, we, we have lots of um, emotions and, and thoughts and things going on in our lives. We lay them before you. Lord, we know that you are our hope. And in you, we put our trust. Lord, as we, as we worship, let us draw close to you. Let us hear your voice today. Lord, we want to bring you honor and glory. For you deserve it all. I pray that your spirit will speak to us, will convict us, will encourage us as we worship you. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Let us sing together. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. Is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine. I can sing all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Jesus' blood and 
and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. To this I hold, my sin has been defeated. Jesus, now and ever is my plea. Oh, the chains are released. I can see I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. said that he will bring me home and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne to this I hold my hope is only Jesus all the is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Alone, 
ziet. Good morning, FizzyBC. Okay, thank you for addressing my name. Um, good to see you all this morning. And I hope that, you know, recently last, I think on Thursday or Friday, it started raining. So weather's getting a bit of cold, make sure you wear enough clothes. Um, recently, we, we started uh, a sermon series. It's called Founded on Faith. Um, and last week, Pastor Sam gave us a sermon, uh, which, which started this sermon series. Do you, do you guys still remember what he talked about on his sermon? Psalm 23, yes. What's, what is it about? What's the message about? Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it, he encouraged us to have faith in him, right? To believe in him, in this building project, right? So I'm going to continue this uh, sermon series, and uh, we're going to uh, think about, collaborate, collect, uh, in collaborate to think about uh, how we can participate in this rebuild project. Can I see a show of raise of hand if you like Legos? Oh, quite a lot of you. Uh, so. Uh, first of all, a disclaimer. Lego is an expensive hobby, so make sure you check your pocket before you, you start this hobby, okay? It's not cheap, okay? Um, and it occupies a lot of space, right? Uh, because it's not like puzzles where you can just disassemble it and then you put it in a box or something. But of course, once you build it, after reading pages of pages and instructions, you have a massive giant structure uh, model that we, which you build and yet you need to find a place to, to put it. Um, so if you live in a pretty squishy condo, probably it's not a good idea to start this hobby, especially if you like big stuff, like you know, building big castle, big cars, um, like the Star Wars spaceship thing, you know, you, you, you can just buy a, um, a big shelf just to put all these kind of flagos. Um, it is a common uh, hobby that my wife and I kind of share, Lego. Uh, and my wife is a really big Harry Potter fan. And you know that Harry Potter have a lot of Lego figures and buildings and little stuff and, and big castles. And um, yeah, so we've been struggling to try to find places where we can put these structures when we've done it. Um, one thing about Legos is that um, especially the, uh, the big, big ones, it feels kind of um, overwhelming at, to begin with. Especially when, if you bought one of the, um, like the, the castle, you'll receive, oh sorry, you'll receive like, um, I think, uh, 80 bags of little transparent bags with, with Lego pieces. And then you have at least four or five instruction manuals on how you build step-by-step -step guides. It's, at, at first, it can, feels kind of overwhelming. How can you finish it, right? Um, I know some people even struggle on how to read the manual of um, I uh, IKEA furniture, how to assemble the furniture, um, let alone like reading like hundreds of pages of Lego instructions. It just feels like impossible to do it. But if you stick to it like step-by-step, -step, you take the time, be patient, and try to actually follow through, okay? All of, actually follow through the steps, you get it. You, you find, it, oh, it's actually amazing. And you start to appreciate the architecture behind it and how, how they kind of um, work together. I feel like um, we can always learn something from our daily lives. And I think uh, I learned a thing or two from building Legos is that when I look at when we talk about um, rebuilding our church, when I look at this, this is the um, imaginary picture where architect, architect just, uh, gave us this picture how it may look like when our new church built, right? Um, when I look at that, I'm, I'm thinking, how can we 
make it a reality. It seems like a really big project, and um, it it, seem, it just seems like pretty overwhelming if we if we put into account on how we can make it happen. Um, but maybe just like Lego, step by step, brick by bricks, eventually we get this new building. So today, um, the topic I want to talk about is called Rebuilding Amidst Hardship. When we talk about rebuilding, uh, it's never an easy task. It's not something that um, we can do uh, just by imagining and then uh, when we have hopes and then we can just make it uh, happen. There are a lot of logistics. There are many things we need to overcome. There are many challenges throughout the process. And I think that the passage on uh, Nehemia is a good reminder for us to think about rebuilding. And I would like to use this opportunity to um, take us back to Old Testament, a Old Testament passage, and as we think about how God speaks to us regarding rebuilding of this uh, building. Um, so how many of you have read this book, Nehemiah, before? Can I, can I see a raise of hand? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we, we have quite a few people. If you have a, haven't read, uh, read that before, I suggest you do, because it's a pretty encouraging story. To summarize this book, it's pretty much it's about the story where um, the story of rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. You may be wondering why uh, it, uh, it, it, it is about rebuilding the wall of Jerusalem. What happened? Is, that, is there something wrong with the wall that they need to you know, fix it? Try to, maybe there's water leakage, they need to try to fix it. Is, is it about that kind of issue or what, what happened? Is it because it's too old, they need to, re they need to replace the, the wall? Um, so this story, it's, um, there are, this book has 13 chapters in total. Um, it talks about how Nehemiah, um, you know, uh, rebuilt uh, the, uh, the war, encouraged uh, Israel to uh, rebuild the wall together. And when we read the salvation history, when we read the Jewish history, we, we know that um, once um, uh, during the realm, uh, the realm of um, David, under the rule of David, they, uh, the, the Israels have um, the big um, structure at the temple of Jerusalem, right? They have their own kingdom. They have their own um, um, glory, glorious days before. But what happened is afterwards, um, um, they have the, the Babylon uh, who overtake their uh, hometown and then they lost their home and then they destroy the structure of Jerusalem, and then they become exiled. Um, so this story is about after Babylon, and then there's the, uh, the person who overcome this Babylon, and now they are under the rule of these um, um, foreign rulers, and then they are trying to, um, under these uh, circumstances, to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. So when we come back, when, we, when you read the, uh, the first chapter of the story, it's about how one day Nehemiah heard from his brother uh, who came back from Jerusalem, and he said, the, uh, the province are in great trouble and disgrace, and the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its gates have been burned with fire. So that's the reality they're facing. They lost their home and the structure is already gone. And the temple um, where they worship God is destroyed. You may think that what is so big deal about this structure being destroyed? You have to understand in a, as a Jews where religion and, and their life it's um, are closely related. They, religion is a part of their life, right? They, they have been raised by the parents who told them that worshiping God is part of their life. 
but now as an exile, how they can do that? It's not like they have Zoom meetings, they have like hybrid worship service at that time. They can't do that, right? Especially in exile, they, they have to do it in, perhaps they have to find different secret places to do it, especially now they're under the ruler of a foreign king who doesn't believe in God. So how they can worship. So when Nehemiah heard what happened in his hometown in Jerusalem, it's, he, he feels like heartbroken. He feels sad. And he feels like he has to do something for his people. So we, then we see in verse 4, where he sat down and wept for what, what he heard from his brother. And then he mourned and he fasted and he prayed before the God of heaven. What was he praying about? He was praying to God that if he can do something about it, if he, if he can help his brother in some ways, he hoped the thing that he can influence, he can use his influence to try to make something. And he really hopes that he can rebuild the wall of Jerusalem as a symbol of rebuilding the faith and to give them hope and encouragement to his brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. So after that, um, God, um, so the story moves on. Um, so Nehemiah, one day, uh, as usual, he was serving his king. And then his king saw that he was in distress. He was not, doesn't seem look okay. And he asked him, what's going on? And he said, my brother in Jerusalem, it's suffering. And we lost our hometown. How can I be happy? How can I be like uh, not affected by this? And the king said, so what do you want? And he asked his king, if you, if you allow me, I would like to go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. And then amazing things happen is that when he prayed to God before, like in first uh, chapter one, he moves the king's heart and allows Nehemiah to assemble a team to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. It was such an amazing uh, thing that no one can imagine because a foreign king allows Nehemiah to go back to his home and rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. So the, move, so the story moves on, and then we see in chapter 2 where he assembles a team, and then Nehemiah encouraged them, encouraged his brother and sister and say, hey, let's, let us start rebuilding. And that started the whole story of how he began the restructuring, the rebuilding of the wall of Jerusalem. And then we see in chapter 3, where, he where the story describes how different families, um, they, they um, are responsible for different parts, different sections of the wall of Jerusalem, and how they do it together. Because it's a pretty big project, if you think about it, right? Because uh, it's, a, it's not a one-man job. It needs a, 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 a whole team of people working together. And we're talking not about days. It could be months and years. So, uh, so Nehemiah uh, assembled this team and encouraged them and, and told, told them, now is the time. God allows us to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Now is the time to do something about it. Now is the time to re to encourage one another to rebuild our faith by our hands, our own hands. We can do something about it. So let's seize this opportunity and make this count. So that's what happened, you see, in, first, uh, in chapter 2 and uh, chapter 3. So everything seems going pretty smoothly so far, you know, um, although there are a little bit of obstacles. So, so far, we seem seems like uh, the rebuilding project is going okay. And then we come to chapter four of this uh, story today. And then the enemies who heard about they, uh, the, the, the Jews starting this rebuilding project, they were furious. They were greatly incensed. And you can see that they, they tried to mock them. They tried to tease them. They tried, 
they were saying like, what they're building, even a fox climbing up on it would break down their wall of stones. So they were trying to verbally try to discourage them and tell them that this is impossible. You're doing something that is meaningless. Why are you trying to do? What are, what are you trying to accomplish here? It's, it's worthless. And now you're under the, the rule of, of, uh, of a foreign king. What are you trying to do? You, you can't restore your kingdom, right? Why, don't you, why, do, why, why are you trying to spend your effort in something that doesn't mean anything? And then we see that in verse 45, Nehemiah prayed to God. Instead of like reacting to it directly, maybe if we are in that circumstances, we will choose to maybe fight back, maybe we would say something back, uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, argue with them. But that's not what Nehemiah did. What he did is he prayed. And he, what he prayed is that turn the enemy's insult back on their own heads and do not cover up their guilt and bolt out their sins from your sight. So basically what Nehemiah is praying is that he is not trying to judge these people. He is leaving uh, the judgment to God. He let God judge them. And he tried to shift his attention away from, from these um, distractions. Instead, he and his people focus on their building project. So as we see that, um, the passage moves on and say they rebuilt the wall till all of it reached half of its height, for the people work with all their heart as one. So although they face many um, challenges and um, the opposition of their enemies, they, fo- they are very focused. They understand it's very important to, um, to get this task done. But of course, the enemy doesn't stop there. The enemy heard, oh, the enemy heard that the repairs to Jerusalem's war has been going well, so they were furious, very, very furious. And then this time, they, want, they do something more than just words. They plot together, they plan to attack and to disrupt, uh, to interfere the re- rebuilding project. So, if you were, you were one of the Jews, what would you do? What would you do? You may feel like, at this point now, it's, it's, it's kind of like you're, you're stuck in the middle. Should you continue? Because you've already, the rebuilding, rebuilding has been going pretty well. But if you continue the project, you may die. Like, you, 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 you may actually have like this kind of attack, physical attack from the enemies. But if you stop right now, then all your sacrifice means nothing. Because remember, all these Jews, they gave up uh, the opportunity to, to make a living. Back in those days, um, if they, they, most of them were farmers, shepherds, which requires them to be physically present to do the job, right? If they don't do it, they don't earn income, they can't feed their families, right? And mostly it's the man who's doing those tough jobs, right? And women at that time are mostly responsible for raising up kids and and manage the household. But now many men who were once farmers, they gave up the job and they came to Jerusalem and tried to um, participate in this rebuilding project. So if they give up now, all the sacrifice, all those months they've been trying to work hard is for nothing, right? So it's really difficult and tough times that they have to face. Should they risk their life to continue the project or should they give up and all the efforts would mean nothing? So the story goes on that Nehemiah encouraged his brothers and said, don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. 
Nehemiah encouraged them to don't, don't put their focus on the threat of the enemies because God will protect them. Because it is by God's will that God wants them to finish this project. God moves his king's heart to, um, to allow the Jews to rebuild the wall. So if God wants this project to succeed, he will make it work. He will find a way to make it work. So Nehemiah encouraged them that now they have really gave up so much. They are at this point. Don't give up. Don't make this sacrifice for nothing. So Nehemiah encouraged them to put their focus back to God, who is great and awesome. So what happened next we see in verse 17 is that uh, they work with one hand holding um, the tools to fix the, to, rebuild, uh, to build the wall, and then another hand they hold a weapon. So that's how they work day and night. So which means like one hand, they're focusing on continue to rebuild the wall. And another hand, they focus on like, they're always prepared. If the enemy come, they are prepared to fight against them, to defend themselves. So what we see afterwards is that um, if you keep flipping, reading the whole story, eventually they finish rebuilding the wall. Eventually they finish it. But why do I bring this story to you today? Why do I share this story with you today? Why don't I say those good stuff like, just have faith, just pray more, you know? God will give us everything. We'll be okay, you know? Everything is going, going to be fine as long as we trust in God, right? Yes, this is important. It's important to have faith. It's important to trust that. But I also want to, want to be realistic. I want to say that, although I believe that, of course, that it's by God's will that he, he wants us to rebuild this building in order for us to continue our ministry, to continue to bless more and more generations to come. But we will face hardship. Things won't just go well all the time. There will be times where Satan is trying to stop our rebuilding project. He's trying to um, discourage us. The more we are working together as one, the more he's trying to break us apart because Satan hates to see us united as one and follow God's commandment. He doesn't like that. He wants to do something to stir up and make sure that we are... Um, not participating in this rebuilding project. It's not, when we talk about church rebuilding, it is not something that we should take it lightly. We should take it seriously and we have to be prepared. We have to pray, yes, that is important. And Brian also talked about praying as well. But another thing is that we need to be prepared. We need to be involved in this rebuilding project. At the same time, we need to defense against Satan's attack. We need to remember that this is something that it takes, it may take a few years to finish. It requires patience. It requires faith. It requires us continue to believe in this project that this is not something it is impossible because God will make it work. It requires us to make sacrifice. We may be struggling. We may, we may not feel comfortable during the process. But that's okay because we remember that as how Nehemiah reminds his brothers I hope this also reminds us that our God is great and awesome. He will protect us. He will make it work. Just don't give up hope during this process. Continue to trust in him that he will finish. He started it, he will finish it. 
I encourage every one of you in July 16, if you can, come to your CPL town hall meeting to understand more about this project. If you have any questions, any issues, if you have any concerns, come and express it and, and, and share your thoughts. And perhaps you have some insight, some, uh, some um, wisdom, feel free to share with us. Do you remember um, Tina once told us that um, we, everyone can think of financially how we can support the church. It can be a two years, five years, and 10 years project, uh, a 10 years commitment where we donate a certain amount of money. I want to encourage you, if you started it, that's great. Um, if you are planning to do it, um, that's good too. If, if you haven't thought about it, um, you know, have a discussion with your family and think about in what way you can support it. But I want to remind you guys, as you are doing your financial commitment, there will be challenges. Satan will try to do something to make you feel like, you know, I, I just can't commit that long. Or maybe during the process, start to give up faith, give up or believing. Because, you know, circumstances happen, right? We, there must be things happening that we cannot continue our commitment. I hope that this passage today becomes a reminder that we will continue to believe in Him. Although it, it may be painful during the process, it's not easy to finish it, but as long as we believe in Him and trust that He is our refuge and our shield, He will protect us. I'm sure this rebuilding project is not just a project. It, it will be a reality where one day all of us can worship in this new building. One, one day we will all unite in this new building and continue his ministry, continue to further his kingdom, continue to share the gospel to other people, to our friends, to our neighbors, continue to invite people to join our community this church community, to become part of our family. So as, as we finish our sermon today, I would like us to continue to use God's word to uh, guide us to rethink, not just how we rebuild our building, but also how his words rebuild our life. In Matthew 26, verse 26 to 29, as Jesus was gathering his disciples in his last supper with his disciples, he understand he has to do this mission. He has to die on the cross because we are living in a broken world and we are sinful. He knows that he needs to rebuild our life by his blood, by dying on the cross to save us, to free us from the sins and the condemnation. So he took the cup, sorry, he took the bread and he showed his disciples and he told them that this is my body where I die for you. Remember me as we partake the bread together. Anyone doesn't have the cup yet? Right there, behind. So as we're going to participate in eating this bread, I want you to think about it. How has Jesus been rebuilding your life? If you haven't invited Jesus to come to your heart to rebuild your life yet, maybe today's the day. 
as we think about rebuilding, let God's word sink into our heart and let his word rebuild our life. So let's eat this bread together. So after that, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, which I shed for you. And, this, and by his blood, our sins have been cleansed and washed away. So now our life has been rebuilt. We can live for him if we're willing to. So let's take this cup and remember him. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are really thankful for you are our refuge and our shield. You are our strength. You will protect us from the attack of Satan, from the attack of our enemies. As we think about our church rebuilding project, it may seem overwhelming, it may seem impossible. We may lose our faith during the process. But we pray that you use Nehemiah's story to encourage us that we have to be united as one. We have to trust in you. We have to pray. We have to Remind one another that who you really are and let your word become our guide and encourage us and to strengthen us. I believe that if we have faith in you, this building project is not just a dream. It will be a reality. And as we are thinking on how we're going to rebuild this building, may your word also rebuild our life. Some of us may be living in a sinful and messy life where we may not see the end of the tunnel, we may see um, a lot of bad stuff and we may be in depression, we may be struggling. May your words shine into our heart and remind us that you love us and our sins have been forgiven by your blood and by you dying on the cross. So may we be reminded that we are free now and we can live for you and I pray this in Jesus name Amen Let us stand together as we sing Let's remind it that our God is great and awesome and he will fight for us There's nothing to fear now, for I am 
Hi, it's me again. Um, so, uh, you may be wondering why am I, why are you seeing my face the whole morning? This, um, and why am I doing the community live sharing? Well, that's exactly I want to bring your attention to our staff news that Pastor Brian is away for uh, from June 10 to 11 to officiate a wedding um, in Gamber Island. So you don't see him this morning. And also, Pastor Ray is away from May 31st to June 14th, um, so you don't see him as well. And thirdly, our church custodian, CK, is on vacation from June 8th to 28th. So please keep the church clean and tidy things during this time. Please dispose any food scraps and garbage in the bins outside the church parking lot. Thank you for your cooperation. Um, 
there's some exciting news. Um, uh, Hanok and Alice Young are hosting their marriage celebration ceremony here at VCBC on Saturday, June 17th at 2 p.m. You are all welcome to participate and, uh, and show your um, congratulate to, to them. Um, there's an announcement uh, um, regarding PCS. Uh, we want to invite you to pray together for our upcoming VBS, which is happening next month. Um, to uh, sign up for our VBS prayer newsletter to receive daily prayer items during the week for the, of the camp. For more details, please con uh, contact Denita. Um, and then um, announcement about DecoFest. Uh, help us to transform our church into a cosmic, cosmic adventure for VBS. We are still looking for more volunteers during the week of um, July 3rd to 7th, um, every day from 9 to 3 p.m. for DecoFest. No artistic skills or experience required. So for more details, please contact Brianna. Um, uh, uh, an announcement about uh, next gen. The VBS team is collecting 500 ml, ml plastic soda bottles and clear rectangular plastic leads with no grooves. Um, please make sure that they are washed and clean. There will be a bean labeled VBS collection in the basement near the kitchen where you can place your items and see examples of the items. Okay, so that's the end of the announcement. Uh, now I'm gonna invite uh, Winnie to share, uh, give us a bit of a uh, recap on what happened last Saturday. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Is my mic on? Okay, good, good, thank you. Um, I'm gonna give you um, some sharing first and then we'll take a uh, look at a slideshow and then I will wrap up with uh, some thank yous. All right, so what do we get when God put together 60 people of various ages, plus four dogs, in a park on a sunny day, and you add some food and crazy games? We get the family reunion picnic in the park. That's what we had last Saturday. So the picnic took place on June 3rd, and it was a time where we reconnected with old friends, and also made new friends. And at this time, I especially want to thank those of you who invited new friends to the event. I know there's always a little bit scary or risky when you invite someone new to a family reunion, but um, thank you so much for taking the risk. So what did we do at the picnic? Well, we played human bingo. What is human bingo, you wonder? Well, if you don't know, come find out next year. From the game, what we found was that there was no one at the picnic who had a birthday in December, at least no one that played a game. Um, we also had Pastor Sam delighted children with his balloon animals. So that was fantastic. Um, one of the new friends that was invited, he brought his entire takoyaki making equipment. So for those of you who don't know what takoyaki is, does anyone not know what takoyaki is? You all do, okay, good, good. So you know how tasty they are and how interesting it is to watch someone making it. So we had um, this person who made over 100 takoyakis fresh off the grill, so that was a real treat. Um, we also got into intergenerational teams to play a game of Amazing Grace game. And you will see some photos from the winning team in the slideshow. And we also had a dessert contest. So I want to thank all of you who participated and brought a dessert to the contest. Um, and, um, and Trinity, your winning dessert got three awards. That was fantastic. And now Trinity has set the golden standard for dessert. <sighs> OK, so let's take a look at the video. We praise God for such a heartwarming and fun fellowship last Saturday. And I also want to thank all of those who participated and also those who helped out. Thank you, thank you. We could not have done it without you. 
it was, um, we couldn't have pulled together the picnic without those of you who sacrificed some of your time um, to help plan and also get there early and also stay behind to clean up. And if you couldn't come last Saturday and are feeling a little bit of Romo, which is regrets of missed opportunity, fear not. There are going to be other events where we'll get together as a community to have fun and fellowship. So stay tuned. Thank you. Okay, so join me in prayer. Um, dear Father, I just want to give thanks for uh, what happened last Saturday. It's such a beautiful sight to see where intergenerations just having a great time together, um, bring the pets, bring food, drinks together, um, and just enjoy the sunny day. Um, I pray that this would be uh, an opportunity for us to continue to um, include more people in this community and share the love um, to one another. Um, I want to pray for um, um, our, our staff um, uh, that you will, um, for, for, uh, for uh, CK, who is now on vacation, um, that he will um, enjoy his um, vacation and uh, have, have a great time there. At the meantime, um, we can maintain our church nice and clean. Um, I want to pray for Pastor Brian and Pastor Ray um, that um, you, will, you will continue to um, bless them um, in whatever uh, place they go to uh, do their ministry. Um, also pray for our VBS. Uh, we are in need of uh, many volunteers and preparation. Um, may everything go smoothly. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we just lift up everything to you this morning uh, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to pass the time to Willis. Let us stand as we sing the doxology. Trust in a God who is constant, who is a shield, who is a refuge, who is great and awesome, and he, who is the one who redeems and rebuilds our life. Go in peace. Amen. Have a great week, peace, peace. Stop.